What's going on, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, we are back. It's the NBA Report on the NBK Network. You got your men's Ron and John here from Still Nick Fans. Thank you for tuning in and being with us once again. How you feeling, brother? I'm doing great, man. Can't wait to start this conversation. It's going to be a good one. We finally have it in store for all the fans that come on and watch and participate on the chat. This is your night. Definitely gonna look uh, looking forward to this one. I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Yeah, man, this is this is a good one. So, guys, listen, just to give everybody a heads up. I mean, you know, I, I've been, uh, you know, talking it up since last week. We've been promoing it up and and getting all the information out there. Uh, unfortunately, our special guest for tonight's show, Coach Nick from the B Ball Breakdown, could not be with us. He had a family emergency that he had to take care of. He sends his apologies and regrets for not being here, but he said he will make it up and maybe we will see him uh, de depending on scheduling because we might have something going on next week. Maybe we'll see him next week or the following week, but we'll make it happen. Um, you know, it's life, man. Things happen. But definitely happens because that happened. It spurred a great idea. You know, we said we haven't done this yet. Why not? Why not give this back to the fans? Let's make it a NBA report fan hour. So that means, guys, you guys dictate the show. This is your show tonight. You bring up the topics. You tell us where you want us to go. We'll talk it up, man. Yeah. So we're looking for fan participation, man. We don't don't get me wrong. We still got stuff we could talk about, but we're trying to get you guys involved and see what you guys want to talk about. And be fair, guys, hopefully it's not all Nick stuff. This is the NBA report. So <laughs> let's let's talk about some stuff that may be relevant to, uh, you know, other NBA teams or if there's something else. Look, we're all Nick fans here for the most part, but then there's other outside entities, right? But even though you're a fan of the Knicks, that doesn't mean you're not a fan of Steph Curry. You're not a fan of some other player in the league. So listen, bring up your takes, whatever you want to talk about. We'll chop it up. Yeah, man. So, uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for uh, <laughs> tuning in. Uh, and shout out to uh, to the chat. I see it, it's filtering in nicely right now. Um, Very nice. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, listen, I might be going crazy. I feel like I'm, I'm in uh, an Alfred Hitchcock movie or something. It's the Twilight Zone. Because this is why I'm telling you this, guys. I like to share stuff with everybody. First off, I've been on a wireless connection since we've started everything, uh, you know, still Nick fans or NBA report like, right? Yeah, I really finally is. switched to a wired connection today. I beefed up my router. I'm really, I'm putting out, it says I've got great, I've got great megabyte Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> everything is good, right? And I just looked to my left and I saw the little meter go up and down. Like, what the hell is going <laughs> on here, folks? What, what do you want me to do? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. You're coming in cl crystal clear on my end. And okay, you haven't, well, that's you good. haven't broken up not one minute. So fantastic, guys! You see that? that? You see that? We trying over here. Your support is making it happen. Thank you. That's right. All right. So let me uh, do this real quick and shout out to some of the people in the chat. Um, first off, shout out to David L. I saw there was a couple comments that I, when I first uh, was looking at the show before we even went on that were there and somehow they're gone, David L. I don't know what you had put up, but they vanished. Anyway, salute to you. Appreciate yeah. you as always. Feel free um, to present them again. Yeah, That's definitely. Um, Geraldine McIver, the first lady of still Nick fans in the building. What's going on, Geraldine? Appreciate you. Salute to Johnny Davis. Salute to David N. Kerry Cox is in the building. Funky Goose World said, I'm two minutes late. <laughs> yeah, you, you made it. You made it. Uh, Ill Maddox is in the building. 
uh core mega is in the building warren franklin is in the building yeah the only bad thing about being two minutes late is you don't hear that dope intro that dope intro yeah, is fire. Yeah, but fire. you hear it on the way out so stay tuned that's right <laughs> um yeah guys so like i said i know you're not ready for this right so you probably don't have anything stored up that you're like damn it i want to talk about this but just as we go along think about it if there's anything you got that uh is on your mind that you want to talk about in regards to the nba if it's nick talk you could talk about it but listen we try this is the nba report guys and i'm saying that i'm multitasking right now because in the corner of my eye i know the mets were up two nothing over these atlanta braves they can't rock with us they can't hang and then i'm looking at peter alonzo he just went deep now it's four nothing let's go metsies okay. you see it you see it <laughs> i see you <laughs> <laughs> anyway sorry guys i had a moment i had a moment i had to get that out um salute to ally wise in the building the public enemy number one harlem grill is here um kevin mcclain senior is in the building uh and that's our first question of the night kevin mcclain we'll get to that in one second uh let's see freeman 48 let's go mets you that's right let's put that up let's go oh, let's go on. mets <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, the public enemy. I see what you put there. Uh -huh. All right, let's we can touch on it a little bit. Um, I don't want to get too deep in it too because I don't know all the particulars, but there's a lot of politics involved with that one. <laughs> um, Afro the G, G no, oh, Afro Jedi or oh, Jedi, Jedi? maybe Jedi. it's the Jedi, the Jedi, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe so. Yeah, okay. Um, salute to you, thank you for being here. All right, so let's start off with Mr. Kevin McLean Sr. Mm -hmm. Okay, do do you think the Lakers and the Knicks will pull the trigger on a Julius for Westbrook trade? Hmm, interesting. What do you think, John? What's your opinion on if holy moly, folks? I'm uh, sorry, guys. You can't keep doing this. Stuff is happening <laughs> over here. Let's go, baby. You're killing it. This we just the got NBA a home report. Not back to back home report. run from Vogelbach, baby. Let's go. Mets in the building, baby. All right, I'm done. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm hyped right now, man. It's crazy. Okay, go, go. go. I'll give you, I give you, I give you love, Dick. It's against your rival team, and I get it. I get yeah, it. we need to beat up it. on them, man. I get it. I get this it. is fantastic. Okay, my fault, John. What were you yeah, gonna yeah. say? So to hit to Kevin McLean's question, um, I don't believe that this would actually take place. Um, I don't think the Lake, the Lakers and Knicks will make a deal for Julius and Westbrook. I know there's some reports that state that if Donovan, if the, if the Knicks make the move for Donovan Mitchell, that um, expect the Knicks to move Julius Randle. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think in my hearts of hearts, I do believe that the Knicks front office really wants to keep Julius on this team with Do a Donovan Mitchell. So I, I'm going to say we don't pull a trigger on that trade and we stay intact with or without Donovan. Okay. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's just an opinion. I, that's not, I don't know and if it's to be they, true. Nothing wrong with that opinion. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm all for it, man. You know, and I, <laughs> that's a good point, Kerry Cox. He said, why bail out the Lakers? That's a fact. Uh, right. If we Now, if we do move Julius and it makes sense, then okay, you do it. But uh, yeah, I'm not trying to make the Lakers better at all. That, that's that's true. Yeah. Um, so let's see. First off, salute to Anthony D. What's good, man? See you in the building. Appreciate you. Worldwide L is in the building. Good to see you, brother. For the love of the game, y'all. If y'all haven't checked it out, make sure y'all check it out. And also, Anthony D. I saw that this past Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, I saw Old School Knicks was back. So check Old Very School dope. Knicks out. On Sundays with Uncle Freezy, Anthony D holding it down. Um, salute to Quiet Money. Uh, A Train is in the building. Appreciate you guys. Um, and I think I already mentioned Johnny Davis earlier. So yeah, Johnny's in here, still in here. Appreciate you. And Roberto Mendez is in the building. He said Nick's all day, baby. Nice. All right. Salute. Okay, okay. Let's see what else we got here. We get to the next question. Let me uh first. Well, off. you didn't answer it. What do you think? You think we stay impact? Yeah, I, I think that um, I think that if the Donovan Mitchell thing doesn't happen, I don't think Julius is going anywhere right now. But that doesn't mean that when we get to the trade deadline, like later in the season, that right. they won't look to move him. But we'll see how it all plays out. Hopefully, the Knicks all buy into the system and we we go from there. Because I think we're going to be a better team regardless. 
It's just that with Donovan, we could be even more. I don't want to say that. We could be better. much more better. Be much much yeah, more yeah, yeah. better. That's we could be more better. We could be <laughs> <laughs> we could we could we could potentially be a better team. With I don't Donovan. Care. Yeah, listen, this is water, it. but I'm on cloud nine right now. The Mets better win this game and keep me golden right now. I'm yeah, feeling yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, all right. Anyway, yeah. so next question up the public enemy. Ooh, this is a tough one. Ooh, that's a tough one. All right. Let, let's just give a we can give a quick spiel on it. Because I don't want to get too deep into this. This is a whole nother ball of wax, and it is what it yeah. is. Um, so obviously today, if you guys haven't heard, um, it came out that you know the WNBA star Brittany Griner uh was sentenced to uh, I believe it was nine, nine and a half years. Right. Uh nine and a half years uh in Russia due to her possession of um 0.7 grams grams of, of uh, uh ma ma marijuana oil, oil. yeah uh, yeah or uh, hash, yeah. Oil, hash whatever oil whatever you want to call it um apparently uh so that's what she was caught with um and uh it's a uh, horrible it's horrible to, to think terrible. about what they're doing to her and you obviously know that it's political there's a lot going on with it it's sad i, I don't know i don't even know what to say like to me it's 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 i i don't know if i the problem here's the thing i don't know about her character as a person she could be a great person she could be a horrible person it's ir it's ir irregardless of the issue the right. issue is she was caught with a minuscule amount of this uh you substance. Know, yeah substance uh paraphernalia <laughs> whatever you want to call it and they are taking her to the woodshed like they're making the biggest example possible mm -hmm. of her and I don't know. I think it's just messed up. I don't know. How do you how do you feel about John? I think it's foul. Like I said, uh, yeah, I don't think this the same thing would have taken place a few years ago if you know Russia wasn't in the mix of a war right now with the Ukraine, and um, and the United States wasn't you know attached to that you know uh, potentially the connection with NATO and all of that. I don't want to get into the political spectrum, but I think that that situation has showed itself for what it is and um and unfortunately Brittany is dealing with that the effects of that um however there are there are some reports that someone prior to Brittany had received a sentence of about seven years but um o um only uh spent maybe uh I forget what it was it was like a couple of months or um, maybe it was 10 months in, in in prison in Russia and then um released so I think there is a possibility for her release. I think they needed to sentence her just to, you know, just as a, as a part of um, their government and, and laws there. Um, but I'm hoping that it would resolve itself and that she would be, you know, home within the, within the year. Hopefully, hopefully that that other situation holds precedent for you know britney griner's case but um i guess we'll wait and see but if she has to do any more than those 10 months if it's a year two years five years i think that's way too much for 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 the crime uh that she so-called committed because evidently they're they're um they're they're um they're charging her with uh the the, the intent to uh to sell or something like that but point seven is way is like that's you know it's got to be very potent <laughs> if you're really trying to sell that much of uh oil use uh yeah and I, I that was definitely uh uh just an exaggeration pretty much in my opinion yeah that that's that's crazy man that is some wild stuff so uh i mean you know i'm hoping that even though they are definitely making an example of her, I'm hoping that the example was made, right? And that now they can slowly figure out a way to move on from this. Even if she, I hope she, you know, even if she had to serve a couple months or something like that, they will allow her to be pardoned and she can get up out of there. Maybe they were doing it because they wanted to see how aggressive the United States was going to be so that they could oh, yeah. get somebody back that they wanted back just to see if they would bite. And since, we, you know, the United States didn't bite, maybe they'll say, okay, this is a little excessive. I hope that, I hope so. I hope, I hope they have a heart out there. Cause this, that's a, that's a sad, sad situation, man. I feel mostly for, for Griner's friends and family, 
you know, because they're the ones who are who are feeling the pains the most. So mm-hmm. I feel for them um, as as well as I do Griner because she's dealing with the repercussions of bringing that over, you know, um, state lines, you know, or you know, uh, to a different country. Um, mm-hmm. I just find it weird that she left the states with that, and um, no one was inclined to let her know the rules of Russia and how you know how they how they operate there. So right, um, right. I just find that. Um, a bit disappointing and um it's unfortunate if, if she did get information about it she was misled so yeah that's it's it's like i said it's it's a very it's a tough situation and uh yeah i'm with you man it's very sad for not just her but her family and loved ones people who care about her that's, let me ask you a question uh, do you think there's parts of it that's race related in your opinion um hmm you know, I wouldn't put it past it being a little bit race related because there's definitely a chance um, that that has something to do with it. Uh, but I feel like even if there's a little bit to it, which I don't doubt, I still feel like is more political than anything else. I think there's just so much, um, you know, going on right now. And I think that any dealings uh you know, with the United States on any grounds, if it had been someone else who was of a, a different, uh, you know, nationality or race, I think they they might have still done something to this nature just to prove a point. Uh, maybe it wouldn't be as drastic or maybe it wouldn't be drawn out as long. But but who knows? You know, you never know. Uh, it, it, this is a tough time right now because there is other things going on across the world. So you never know that that is kind of like the, 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 the wrench and everything. Like we don't know because that is happening. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's exacerbating everything that's happening. We don't know what, what's, what's fueling all this stuff that's going on, but you know, there's definitely something behind it. We know that whether it be race related, political, you know, the fact that there's a war happening, yeah. it's, it's definitely something behind it that we know. Yeah, and she checks off all the boxes too. In a lot of cases, you know, she's yes, she you know, does. That's true. So that's that's the thing. She's a female athlete, you know, uh, African American athlete, who is also, um, you know, um, falls part, of the the L- LGBT part of the LGBTQ. LG, yeah, yeah, exactly. Community, I, yeah. and so you, a lot of those things could be at play here. We don't necessarily know, but um, it's just unfortunate that she's dealing with these repercussions and, you know, um, I think this is, this is a big one for a lot of athletes who, who plan to travel and, and, um, and partake in, 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 in substances like marijuana that are, that is now legal in the United States. Um, and some other places when you travel, you may have to do some, um, some investigating of your own and, and some research before heading out, you know, just to uh, be on the safe side. 100%. Listen, um, you know, let that be a uh, a realization for all of us. That's a public uh, service announcement, you know, for for you, your family, your your, every, your loved ones, your friends. You got to be careful, man. You're traveling to other states, other countries, no matter where it is. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful of your belongings. Be smart about what you're carrying with you because you don't want to get caught up in any situation. Just so happened she was in you know, in the worst situation, um, you know, but it could be anywhere. You never know. There's laws and stuff that happen not only across the, you know, the The country, but statewide. (laughs) Thank you. I was just going to say statewide, man, there's laws and stuff that you got to watch out for. So especially if you, if you, if if you have a license to carry, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a big one. You know what I mean? Uh, especially depending on what state you're crossing, whatever lines of state you're crossing you can you can definitely uh potentially do time for yeah carrying uh you know a licensed weapon <laughs> so yeah just just be smart out there guys and i hope i hope the you know the rest of these these athletes no matter what sport it is you know are paying attention to what's going on because they have to travel they've got to go to all different places and now that sports is international you know you got games that might happen take place in other countries Football, the NBA, uh, NFL season is going to start. The Giants are going to play in London. You know, there's a lot of stuff like that happening. So you just right. got to be very mindful and very careful now when you do things. Right. Um, 
Thank, thank you for, for the topic, the public enemy. Appreciate you. Um, and for people who are just tuning in right now, we were just we were supposed to have our special guest tonight, Coach, <clears throat> excuse me, Coach Nick from the B Ball Breakdown. Fabulous guest. Looking forward to speaking to him. But unfortunately, he had a family emergency. He couldn't make it. He ap sent his apologies, but he will make it up. We'll figure out a way to get him on here in the next couple of weeks. Um, but it spurred something. We said, let's make this the NBA report fan hour. So now right. the show is about you guys, what you guys want to talk about. You set the topic. We'll talk about it. And, right. uh, and you know, we just wanted to give something. It, it's, it's not like I don't want it to sound like a cop out either. I got topics for days. I could talk about anything. I could talk about the stuff I heard earlier just in a different way. Don't want to do that. We said, let's do something different. Let's sure. include you guys, get you guys involved. Now, if you want to talk about something that happened the other day, that's fine. You put it in the chat. We'll talk about it. It's right. up to you guys. <laughs> Think about any questions you may have and pop them in the chat, and we'll see if we can get to all of them uh, and, you know, have some dialogue. But before we get to the next question, excuse me, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to CJ. I see you in the chat. Tiffin Smith is in the building. What's good? What's up? Um, Danny Landis is here. I see Sherwin is in the building. What's up? Salute. Cash out James. Gold all in my All right. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Cash out James. Appreciate you. Hawkeye is in the building. Um, Ghetto Intellect. What's up, GI? Good to see you. And I caught the show the other day. I didn't catch the whole thing, but I caught some of it. I think I shouted y'all out in the chat. Um, you and, and Free Keith doing your things on Blorence Tears. Appreciate you guys. Uh, if you haven't checked out Ghetto Intellect, and Free Keith, they got a show on Blorence Tears as right. well. Blorence Tears has got a lot going on, man. They're trying to get back to their programming. You know, they took a little bit of a break because, you know, NBA season had stopped, but it's, re right. it's rearing up. We're getting back into it. So, and I think yeah. that their show is called Freestyle, right? It is. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, I feel like there's another word I'm missing there. It might be something freestyle, but let us know. Let us you know. Can, you can, you you on. can educate us, ghetto intellect. Yeah, I, yeah. I apologize. Put it brother. on the chat. Put it on the chat. Yeah, we'll yeah. Shout it out. Shout out to Ill Maddox is in the building. King Poppy, uh, NYK is in the building. East Blue Drew is in the building. What's good? All right, let's get to the next question. I see you. The New Yorker is here as well. What's up, New Yorker? Let's go Mets. You see it? You see it? Sorry, John. This is going to be one of the moments for you. Man. I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is from Kerry Cox. What's greater, the love for Obi or the hate for Randall? Ooh. Mm. I'm going to say the hate for Randall. I think there's a lot more hate for Randall than there is love for Obi. I think there are folks, I think there are a lot of, um, you know, Obi, Obi followers and, and guys who want, and, and people who want Obi to succeed with the Knicks or without the Knicks, but just succeed in general. But I think, there's a lot more hate coming from uh, New York fans, New York Knicks fans, over Randall than the, the than they love Obi. So I see folks wanting Randall out of here just to give Obi an opportunity, not necessarily knowing if his opportunity will be you know uh, worthwhile. But they're willing to take that chance and that risk and moving a 20 and 10 guy like Randall just because of his behavior and his lack of um, you know. Uh, um, I don't want to say chemistry with his teammates, but just his, his his lack of awareness when it comes to the referees, and um, and just like how he looks, you know, perception wise to mm -hmm. the fans. Uh, I agree a hundred hundred percent. I believe the the hate. It, it, what a difference a year makes. Yeah, it's nuts. People really they have not forgiven Randall for the thumbs down. They are not happy about that moment when Obi was on the ground and Randall didn't pick him up. They are not happy about the fact that the Knicks were winning the game and Randall walked off the court. Yeah. They are not happy about the fact that Randall was struggling, having all these issues, and then wouldn't come out and speak to the press after the game. They are not happy with him slapping the laptop off of the coach's <laughs> yeah, I, That was next. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just like it was on and on the entire season. Had a bad year, man. <laughs> But it was it was all emotional, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If he was able to bottle that emotion and just leave it on the court, everybody would continue to be a fan of his. But he wasn't able to bottle that in and 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 bottle it to his game and let it, you know, he let it affect the outcome of a game. He let it affect him personally, 
you know, at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be stronger than that, especially on, you know, you gotta be a little bit thick headed when it comes to like the fanfare and the media, you know what I mean? You gotta, you know, sort of play the judge role, you know, I don't want to talk about any New York Yankee stuff, but you gotta play the judge role, the Derek Jeter role, you know, you gotta, you gotta be better when it comes to the media and, and front facing, cause you are the front, you are the face of the, or you could have been, could he could have been the face of the franchise had he done the right things this past season you know not necessarily as a guy who's going to be a number one guy but just like sort of a captain a guy who can hold it together keep his team you know keep the team um camaraderie right and everything like that and just say the right things he just wasn't able to do it and now you know he's sort of uh he's sort of the third third option now second the third option right now He's even behind um, R.J. Barrett at some point. I think um, even with with the with fans wanting Barrett to sort of take over, um, you know, on the offensive end more than they would uh, Randall. Yeah, yeah. Listen, and, and let me, oh, man, let me point to this real quick. Sherwin, listen, I like Ob Toppin. I told you before the season started it was going to be Ob season. Tom Thibodeau stood in the way of that, okay? Yeah. You're going to see this year if Obi Toppin is on the New York Knicks, it is going to be OB season. I'm telling you, you let Obi get minutes, you're going to see Obi do some stuff that you're not expecting Obi to do because Obi is a good player. He's not. I'm not saying he's a great player, but Obi is a good player. He was a national player of the year for a reason. Mm -hmm. The Knicks picked him at, at, at when they picked him, but, you know, he was highly touted. Obi has skills. He's very athletic. He can shoot the three pretty good. I mean, he shot around 38. He's gotten better. 30, not not 30. to begin the season. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm He's saying from college in Davidson, he shot 38, 39% from three. But he didn't shoot at a high clip in Davidson. He shot two and a half whatever, per game. That, two and a half not, per game. I get it. Davidson. What, what's the. What, I mean, what I said, did I say Davidson? I'm I, I'm sorry. I'm That's um Steph Curry's. Yeah, uh, he school. was. Uh, wasn't he in Dayton? Oh, Dayton. man. Now I lost it. Wasn't I had Dayton? it. Dayton. 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 Red schools. Um, yeah, my fault. I don't know where Davidson came from. <laughs> Maybe it's because the NBA report. Because yeah, you were talking about shooting threes. and you That might have been it. Could have like, been it. And I saw, a video, I saw a video uh, <laughs> earlier today of, of Steph Curry hitting like 101 threes in a right. row. It's an old Easy. video, but I mean, just come on, man. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, yeah, man, but I, I, I don't hate Julius Randle. If you look back. OB at, Toppin. You don't hate Julius, you don't hate Obi. No, <laughs> I love Obi, but I oh, don't okay. hate Julius Randall. Okay, okay. I, if you look back at, at previous shows and stuff when we've talked about Randall, I've never talked negatively about his game to the point where I don't respect it. I always talk about how he's a double double guy and gives you five or six assists, depending. Um, and I value his game. I think he's very strong. I think he's a good defender at his position, at his position. I think he um, is also a very strong player, mm -hmm. but we just named like six different things that he did this year that were all negative and all affect the team. Yeah. Who else is doing stuff like that on the team that I can point to and say, this person is just as bad as Julius, or I could look at him and say, it's his fault. No, I, I got to look at Julius. I give him a little bit of, of a pass because of the fact that I know some of it was blown up because how the fans were treating him and his family. I thought that was that was whack. Okay. But still, you got to say, I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to be a man about it, too. Don't do stuff. Thumbs down all this stuff. Don't slap laptops out of people's hands. Don't not pick up your teammates and not address it when you know people are talking about it. You want to act like you're the leader. You want to get paid the most on the team then you have to act like you are a real leader. You got to step up and take it all. You're in New York. So you got to be the figurehead. You got to speak. You know, I think it, it won't end until he owns it, right? He has to own his mistakes. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I think for Nick fans, and I'm I'm speaking for me at this point, for me, I will be okay with him continuing, continuing to play on this Knicks team, right? But I think one of the things that are going to be missing is ownership, ownership of your behavior. If you don't own up to your behavior, and 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 concede to the fans that you were wrong and made, you made a mistake then at some point i think fans will turn back and allow him the grace to sort of build himself back up with this team but until then everyone's going to look at him as someone who's uh sort of a selfish 
you know, malintent individual because, you know, the reality is he, he plays a game for a living and he makes a lot more than just, a, the, you know, just the, just us. He mm-hmm. makes a lot more money annually than we do as fans. Um, and I'm not speaking on everybody, but just I know for me, he makes a lot more than I do. And as a fan, I don't want to spend my heart on money to watch someone act the way he's done in this past this past season. I want him to carry himself with respect and and with professionalism. Um, and uh, unless it's unless it's um, garnered, right? Like unless it's it's something that 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 like for instance, what happened with with his family and mm-hmm. the disrespect that happened at that point, then yeah, you can lash out at a few you know. Um, um, disrespectful fans or whatever if someone threw something at you or did something to your family like that i, I totally 100 understand but outside of that playing the the sort of playing that card where where like he's not getting the foul calls and like you got to play through that even if that is to be true you got to play through that you can't let that affect your game you cannot affect that let that affect you emotionally on the court you know what i mean like you can't show up like that you know, it looks bad. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> Worldwide L went totally away from basketball. He's like, I'm getting this question in. Uh, th- this is a quick one. Let, let's just hit this real quick because it's it's out of the order. So I'm going to hit it real quick. Okay. He said, will Tyrod Taylor be the starting quarterback for the Giants? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, there you go. There you got it. You heard it here first, Worldwide L. Your jet, your jet questions. I see what you did there. Tyrod Taylor would be a backup quarterback if Daniel Jones falters. Though we have a good option. And that is a good option. He I is a, a better option than than most uh, backup quarterbacks. And uh, last thing with regards to this topic, and we can move on, because um, I saw Sherwin also said, like, "What would you do if someone threatened your wife and kids?" Listen, that's serious, but let me just point something out to you, Sherwin. Randall was already acting funky already before, before that. that happened. The thumbs down supposedly was as a result of them uh, treating his wife and kid a certain way, but he was already doing stuff before the thumbs down. You, The thumbs down was the last straw. Remember, you think about what Nick fans have been saying. They were okay with certain things they saw. They weren't happy. They were feeling a certain way about him. But when he did the thumbs down, that's when some people stopped being his fan entirely. Right. But that's when I mean, you could say that. Yeah. Media. Right. 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 So you could say that, 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 yeah, obviously who's going to, I mean, you, you, I'll be acting crazy if somebody threatens my wife and son, of course, or kid right. or whatever, child, daughter, whatever it is. Right. Yeah, I get it. But like I said, that's not the issue with Randall. You can't put everything in a vacuum and say, this is the reason why he was like this. No, this happened at that moment, and he responded a certain way because of it. But it doesn't change the fact of how he was being as a teammate, how he was looking to a lot of the fans as far as his effort out there on the court, and the other stuff that happened you know, with the coaching staff or whatever was going on. Other mm-hmm. things were happening. It, just, it, it was all bad for, for Julius, and he went through something. There's a reason um, why he is apparently seeing a, a sports psychologist right. there, was a lot, there was a lot going on and not to mention if you think about a handful of fans that act crazy on twitter or whatever they did that whatever occurred that's a handful of fans that act ridiculously right the majority of fans aren't posing a threat to his family um and on the end of the day he has a lot more to lose career like his career and uh, um versus someone who's just tweeting along trying to be a hater or you know what they call those folks who who troll or whatever you know what i mean um he has a lot more to lose you know so he has to always keep that in in, in you know on top of top of the mind you know what i mean um as long as his his family are protected his family and, f- and close friends are protected and are, are in safe you know what i mean in safe in a safe environment that he feels like they're in a safe environment that's all he should really concern himself about. I agree all with all the that. other stuff. I agree with that. And 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 uh, uh, I am hoping that if Julius Randle is with these Knicks this year, that he has a great year uh, because I'd much uh, rather see him do well with the Knicks than do bad because uh, right. you know he's a part of the team, man. All right. So before we get to the next question, uh, salute and shout out to 
David Piccolo, see you. No Cap Sports Talk is in the building. Judah Hebrew Lion is here. What's good? Aruku Saki is in the building. Um, Pete P is in the building. Pete Panogiotopoulos is here, folks. Ola Sumba is here. Scott Wolf is in the building. Dwayne Dennis is here. Uh, Bang USA Sports is in the building. Anna Grill is here. Nick Yak is in the building. And Kevin Taylor is here. What's good, y'all? Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. All right. So, oh, interesting. This is a question, and and yeah, I'm gonna try to see if I'm gonna see if there's another question that revolves around something else in the NBA uh, in a second. But I'll touch on this question because it, it is Nick related. Johnny Davis said, "Will Tibbs get help coaching offensively?" Man, I hope so, bro. <laughs> that is like my biggest wish, bro. I hope he right. does because I feel like. Um, the Nick offense really needs to expand. You've got dynamic players on the team. Now, I didn't say transitional or like, you know, superstar players, but you got dynamic players. You got guys, you know, who are athletic, you know, OBs or whoever. You got other guys. Now you got a point guard who can orchestrate better. You mm -hmm. still got a really good all around player in Julius Randle. Um, you got, uh, you know, RJ Barrett who can do a bunch of different things too and is still learning his game. Only 22 years old, guys. And, you know, you've got someone that can help unlock guys like Mitchell Robinson and, and Jalen Brunson. He, that's another thing that he can do. So being that you have these type of pieces, right, and Quentin Grimes has looked in, uh, much improved on his game and what he's doing, how he's trying to open up, uh, you know, his his uh, ability to pass the ball more. I see him continuing to work on his little dribble move, getting to the rim, giving a little pump fake, and then he goes up and under with a layup. That looks like it's a go-to move. I've seen it three times now, so that's good. That means it's locked in. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that, I think the Knicks definitely need to expand and – what I will say is, if you look at what they did in the summer league, they did run some new plays, some interesting stuff that they weren't running last year. Now, the only thing is, you may not notice it because it wasn't as effective because the personnel out there wasn't as good. But if they start running that stuff with the big club, I'll be pleasantly surprised. I'll be very happy about that. What do you think about them expanding the offense and maybe getting some extra help for Tibbs? Hey, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to something like that. I mean, that's what I'm expecting from the team, knowing how – how we were so poor last year in transitional offense. I expect this to get, you know, like drive that home, you know, being able to, to get stops and and get out in transition and score easy buckets. I mean, that's why we we brought in Jalen Brunson and that's why we're, we're, you know, if we stay packed, right, and then we don't make the trade for Donovan Mitchell, I expect this young core of players to go out there and run. Uh, same thing with D-Rose. Like that, you remember when we started the season, the – that the bench sort of had their 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 sort of um like they were the better squad out there for the first half of the season. You know, they would run up and down the court, they got quick buckets, D Rose pushed the ball. And if we get any indication that D Rose uh comes back somewhat healthy, can do that with the second unit, we still we would then have that for the first unit. So I'm hoping that that is the case. And I'm hoping that we do bring in someone to sort of help out uh round out the offensive schemes as a coach and, and sort of, uh, you know, builds out on that playbook. Yeah. I mean that um, I'm with you on that. That's I'm hoping for the best with regards to that. And I think that Knicks will be uh, a much improved team um, as far as how they execute their offense. I'm, I'm at least I'm hoping for that. Uh, hmm. It's five, five, two Mets. Ronald Acuna just hit a two run Homer. The kid is special. He deserves every time he, he he deserves the props, man. That that yeah. dude's nice. Some of um, so let me see. I was just trying to see if there was something other than okay. Here's one, and then I'll, I'll come back. I'm not gonna dismiss the 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 Nick uh, questions. I just want to kind of open it up and get to some other stuff. Freeman forty eight. How well do you think the Clippers big three will gel this season, and are they a championship contender? Mm. If healthy. I will say they are a contender because that those three individuals, one healthy, are very a very dynamic. Uh, this is this is not even a duo. This is a a triple, right? Like a, I don't know what a trio. You right. know, they are a very dynamic trio, um, and each of them couldn't score the ball 
with and without the ball, right? Like Paul Jones is a good spot up shooter. Um, Wall isn't a great spot up shooter, but he's getting better at it. But Kawhi is. Kawhi can spot up and shoot it as well. He did that his entire first two seasons, I think, with the Spurs. Um, his first few seasons with the Spurs. That's what that was his role um, until he, you know, took over the that team. Um, but I think, oh, I don't even think he took over that team. I think he got traded right before he was given given the keys with Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, I think they're gonna run with the best of them. Uh, it's really what it is all depending on how they build around that those three. You know, if they build around those three with shooters and some guys who are athletic and can run the run the floor because we know John Wall's strength is getting up and down the court. You know what I mean? He's very fast. Even with injury, he still carries a really quick first step. Um, he may not be as explosive as he used to be, but I think he still could get up and down the floor with enough speed to make it um, make it tough on a defense to, you know, to slow down their pace. Um, poor George, poor George and, and, um, and uh, if they can run with poor George, at the wing, you know what I mean? Um, I think they're going to be good, man. It's going to be interesting to see. I agree. I I think, uh, man, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and and just the fact of them two being healthy alone is going to be huge for the Clippers. Now you're adding in Wall. If Wall's healthy, I don't know if Wall can be healthy for a full season, but if you can get 50 games out of him, if if you can get 50 games out of, out of all those three of them, three, <laughs> yeah, then they... you, you you know you might. But now keep in mind, you gotta it's gotta be mixed up. You like you need yeah. maybe they can be hurt a little bit during the regular season, but they all gotta be healthy for the playoffs. If you yeah. don't got them in the playoffs, then it's a wrap. Forget right. about it. But yeah, yeah, those MCLs and those injuries that they had. Those are serious injuries, you know, and they're not easy to come back from. So, you know, um, the wear and tear on their bodies is a lot more than what people think. Mm-hmm. I think the Clippers are taking a flyer on it just because of on in paper on paper it looks fantastic, right? Can't can't argue with that move, especially because Houston's paying most of Wall's contract. You know what I mean? So, in right. that in that sense, it it makes sense. You know what I mean? In that case, it makes sense. So, um. Let's see how they do. Let's say if they stay healthy towards the back end of the season. But if they're healthy for the majority of those games, I can see them um, in the playoffs. Um, and then if they're healthy during the playoff run, I can see them making some noise and, and giving some, you know, stiff competition to to teams like the Mavericks, teams like Phoenix, you know. Um, and we don't necessarily know how the Lakers are going to rebound from last season. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, that that's um, that's a, a nice problem to have that they got over there. I mean, the the injury issue is tough. You know, hopefully they can withstand that and and not deal with a lot of that. But but healthy mm-hmm. man, that's a nice problem to have. So that brings us to this question from Sherwin. Um, he said, "I was uh, pl- planning to just listen. How many more wins do you uh, see us winning because of Donovan?" Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well. Let's do this because, you know, uh, <laughs> let's see here. Regular season, the Knicks won 37 games and they had 45 losses. Okay, so they're 37 games. Hmm. I say 42 games. I am even more generous than that, folks. He says 42 games. I say 47. Yeah. 47, 48, 40, 49 so games. That's eight 49 more wins. Games. What is that? We were 37? We had 37. So I think we could we could win 12 more games with Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, that's a little high for me. Well, the reason why I say that is because we could have won six games had we played smarter when we had our 20-point leads. We mm-hmm. just played smart basketball down the stretch. That's six more victories we could have won with that team from last year, with this past right. year. So you add Jalen Brunson to the mix. You add Donovan Mitchell, who is a little bit of a closer type, who can get you some big baskets at crunch time when you're struggling a little bit. Um, I think those but two. He's also might... lost leads in, in his tenure with the Jazz. He's True, not the, but you know regular I mean? season-wise, they run through the league. 
They were that's wrong. true. Yeah, yeah. The, they, yeah. Their, their issues really happen in the playoffs for whatever reason when the right. defense intensifies and things get you know ratcheted up. Right. But in the in the regular season, they they run through teams. Right. Uh, so I'm thinking they could possibly them two could make up for six games, and then the other six games that we never should have lost to begin with. That's 12 games, so I say 49 wins. Let's go. Almost a 50-burger. Let's yeah, go. Not do, I'm not doing no, that until no, they no, – no, 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 no 50-burger? No, we're no, not doing no that. No 50-burger. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not jumping off the ledge this year. All right, my bad. <laughs> okay, I, I'm thinking like six games max if okay, that was the okay. case, you know. I got so you, we I got start you. to prove I, things around my this league, we – you know. I didn't know the ledge, guys. I we're a playing team though. at best – at best with Donovan. Like, I'm not giving him more than that. My bad. My bad. I didn't know the ledge. I was about to jump out. My bad. <laughs> my fault. Sorry. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, then that, that I guess that answers your question. Uh John says 42, was it? Yeah, I'll, I'm I'll give him I'll give him like six five to six games more. Okay. And I'm jumping out the window at 49. But realistically, I'd say maybe 47. Ten more wins. Right. Um all right, so let me ask you this one. Ooh, oh, okay, interesting. No cap sports talk says if we don't get the Mitchell deal done, how long before New York Knicks fans turn on the same kids they don't want to include in the deal? Mm. <laughs> Depends on how they play, mm. man. Depends on how they play. You know, I I feel like for Grimes, I think they're gonna give him more 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 opportunities you know at least a fanfare because i mean look how many look how many fans was riding with uh frank nilakina you know what i mean and allowing him sort of to develop as a player you know they 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 kept every year to year they kept you know edging him on as to be to have the starter minutes and then he got the starter minutes and then they were like you know sort of the coaching is a problem you know like I think they're going to give a guy like Grimes every opportunity to stay with this squad because they're going to like his defensive intensity and they mm -hmm. know he's not going to take a, a playoff. They know he's the type of player who isn't going to take a, a, a playoff. <laughs> However, the same cannot be said with Quickly because even though he plays with the same sort of intensity, both offensively and defensively, he takes very poor shots, right? And if his shot selection doesn't clean up, clean up um, you know, by his own will, um, I think Nick fans will get tired of him just chucking up threes from from long range and missing, you know, the the majority. Um, he has to hit that at a higher clip in order for for Nick fans to be okay with him shooting those. Um, Obi, I think he'll get some opportunities. There is a little bit of uh, Obi being sort of overrated. There's some conversations around him being overrated for that. For the pick at eight, I think it was. Yeah, he was picked eight that year. Um, they don't a lot of folks don't see him as a three. And if he's out there in the perimeter shooting threes and not making them, they're gonna really fall out of, out of touch with him as well. Um early on, we were thinking you and you and I were talking about his um him not being aggressive enough, like to the basket. Like with those sort of athletic abilities, you want him to attack the rim. Um, and not, you know, fall away from contact, just drive through contact. That's some of the stuff that we wanted to see. He started coming around at the end of the last year, hitting three-pointers, getting more buckets, second chance, you know, picking up second chance misses, you know, and, and being active. So I think he would – it would depend on how he plays, you know. Um, who else? Deuce. Deuce is going to see the floor that often. I don't see Deuce seeing that, much, that, seeing that many minutes. The same for for Jericho. I see him. I see them guys getting spot minutes when needed. Um, so I think the I think those guys, if they stay, we, we still aren't going to be able to see enough of them to make a judgment on them. So I think they'll be okay for now. Yeah, Barrett. I consider him a young guy. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a make a make a break year for him, right? Like this is his what fourth season. With the Knicks, uh, fourth season. Yep, make a break. This is, it. This is the make yeah. or break year. You got it. You got it. You got to be that twenty and five six guy, right? Like you gotta, you gotta bring it. You gotta on better, on better efficiency. 
better efficiency, right? You got to be uh, better from the free throw line. We want to see all of those um, skill levels go up, and uh, and then we can see you being a part of this team for the long haul. Yeah, uh, I, I could agree with that. I could agree with that. Um, let me see. Shout out to uh, Trish D. What's going on? Appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Louisiana Knicks is in the building. My guy Visions is here. What's going on, Vision? Appreciate you. Uh, shout out to No Way Jose in the building in the chat. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you as always, man. Um, uh, yeah, we gave Jose the night off tonight, so he's he's relaxing and chilling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's um, working a, a different event. Tonight. Yeah, he's working. Yeah, exactly. He's 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 off, but he's working. <laughs> um, and uh, I think. Is that everybody? Yeah, just salute to everybody. Uh, I don't think I missed anybody. And maybe there's one name that I might have missed, but he trolling a little bit, so I'm not going to mention him. All right. You know who you are. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> so salute to everybody. Thank you. Uh, next question up is ah, David Piccolo. I see what you did there. Staying, staying current with your topic there. He said, will Jalen Brunson be the next point god of New York? I hope so. <laughs> I, I do too, man. I do I too. So. You know what? He definitely you say what you will. Um, because when you really kind of look back and think about what um what these point guards can bring, right? The question has come up on many different shows, many, you know, many different times about like a guy like Raymond Felton. Mm -hmm. And when you think about Raymond Felton, is he a point guard? No, he's not. I'm not saying that, guys, but what he is is he's a tale of two stories right the second iteration of raymond felton hmm, it was all right it was passable the first iteration of raymond felton the first time we got him he was balling he was like all-star worthy balling mm -hmm. so and that's uh and there's no knock on raymond felton but i think personally skill wise i think jalen brunson is better skill wise than raymond felton so i think he may not be a point god, but I think uh, Jalen Brunson could be really good for these New York Knicks. I want to ask the chat, in your opinion, chat, who was the the last point god that the Knicks had on their team? You can go back as far as you want, but like for me, do you consider Mark Jackson a point god? Was it Rod Strickland? The even though he didn't get a real a real chance to play with us. Like who in your mind, you know, was a point God for the New York Knicks? Or do you have to go all the way back to, you know, Walt Frazier? Hmm. Mm. Think about that, guys. Put it in the chat. We'll we'll yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll Marbury. We'll Marbury. Marbury had his moments. It's a little, you know, didn't end well for him. I see Clyde Frazier. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh well Chris D Rose, D Rose, <laughs> but I don't know about D Rose with the Knicks D Rose, like yeah. you know. but I, I hear you. Chicago for sure. And even man, why is that happen? Even Crawford, Crawford was a Nick for a little bit. But Crawford's best highlights and moves, I don't think happened with the Knicks. He had those big game. He had a couple of big games. No, no, he scored. Knicks, he put some points up. But I yeah. think his, his biggest moves and stuff, when he got busy, highlights. like, yeah, yeah, his highlights, I think happened when he wasn't a Nick for the most part. He yeah. had a couple with the Knicks, but, like, the main he, ones, he, was, you know. He also played beside Morbury, too. So that's right. a little, you know, he played sort of the two-guard role, you know. Um, ha <laughs> ha, JJ said in the Lakina, you're a funny guy, <laughs> Frankie. J kid until the playoffs. Ah, uh, yeah. used to rock the Isleys. I see you, Manny. Salute to you. Appreciate you being here, Howard Isley. Uh, you know, he was a good point guard Jeremy where he Lynn. was, but uh, <laughs> I don't know about you know, necessary Chris Duhon. Hey. So, you know, outside okay. of for me, outside of Mark Jackson, we've never had a sort of a guy who could run a squad like um a Chris Paul like you know what I mean that was sort of uh you know I mean Jake Kidd did really well when he was here but he wasn't he was a lot older he played a lot better in a different system you know and you could see he played a better system with Dallas when he won his first championship 
but he wasn't the same kid that you know was running up and down the court with with, with Vince Carter and Jefferson. You know what I mean? That, that was the heyday, you know, with Dallas Mavericks when he was his first run with the Dallas Mavericks with um, Mashburn and Jimmy Jackson. Like that was the that was the elite J kid. You know what I mean? Um, even though he couldn't shoot a lick from the three point range, he got that later in life. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, um, but. Jerry Millen, man, he had he had that one stint. What those twenty games? Listen, he uh, listen. He had a really nice run, man. It was a really nice run. Got to give him credit for that. It was right. a really nice run. Um. Oh yeah, now I see you. Uh, shout out to Almighty Finesse. I don't know why I missed you earlier, bro. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um. Yeah, and uh, I see you put a couple names in there. Tony Douglas. Um, Tony Douglas. Other guys, Pablo Prigioni. Uh, you just named Jose them all. Jose Calderon. Huh? Jose Calderon. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Listen, the, the, these guys were all. You know, they had moments. They were serviceable at uh, best. You know, Greg Anthony was the most disappointing one for me because I thought right. Greg Anthony. First off, I didn't realize that Greg Anthony wasn't with the Knicks a long time. I thought he was no. with us a lot longer than he was. It seemed like it, right? Because it, it was sort of the it was the heyday. It was the yeah, heyday. I guess That's because why. he was in all of the. He was in. The, 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 big the time he was with us, a lot of stuff happened, and he was in all the brawls. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember him so vividly. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Pete P said Michael Ray Richardson and Marbury. Those are two very good. Michael choices. Ray Richardson, Richardson was a I, I, give, I give you it's that. A shame what happened to him right. to his own volition, but you know, right. still. Um, and uh, Pete had a. He said, "Run." Do you remember Phil Ford and Ray Williams, two of the best Nick point guards ever? Not too many remember them. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie to you. They are before my time, so I don't really remember them. Right. <laughs> um, I probably go back as far as you know, maybe see eighty six, eighty five. Yeah, eighty six, eighty five. <laughs> That's as far back as I as as you know. I was a I was a youth back then, so I, I that's all I really remember. Um. Yeah, so let's see a couple more questions that we had here, and I want to. Those are those are like players. Phil Ford played in the seventies, right? Like early seventies or something. like right, that. Right, right, must be. Uh, this is just a, a quick statement. Judah, uh, Hebrew Lion says, "Shalom, my brothers. Hey, my opinion is that we just need to leave Mitchell alone, and let's see what we have with the players we have, and still see what we need afterwards. Just food for thought." I agree with that. I think John pointed to that when we asked the question, like, how will we go forward if we don't make the um, Donovan Mitchell move? And I, yeah, I'm, I, we're good either way, to be honest with you, Judah. Uh, I'm I'm fine either way. Um, I, though, I know that if we don't get him and he goes somewhere else, the Knicks are not going to live it down. Uh, it's right. going to be tough. So, And he's going to wind up going somewhere else because even if Utah says we'll just try to do something with them for now, that's not going to last long. So, and that's not wind up going not, somewhere. That's not their direction anyway. Right, and exactly. Ainge and the rest of them have have been really outspoken about trying to re rebuild that franchise um, through the draft. So, um, you know, expect him to go if it's not to the Knicks, it's somewhere else. Um, however, I still do feel in my hearts of hearts that we need to move. Evan Fournier to make room for some of the younger players to get an opportunity to play more minutes. Mm. I think Evan holds a lot of that, um, holds a lot of their growth up. You know what I mean? Just being on the team. Mm -hmm. And you, at that point, you're not able to see Grimes play, you know, um, distinguishable minutes. You aren't able to see Cam play, you know, um, and you may have something in those two. You know, they're not, may, they may not necessarily be starter material, but um really good solid role players potentially um and if if they surprise us they can become you know staples in this um on this team right no i i agree with that um i should have probably uh hmm let's see uh roku saki says uh julius at so a small forward this year hey it's a possibility especially if julius um is uh as slender and as light as we think he is, I think that that definitely the way he's working on his body and coming into training camp, uh, he might be able to move a little quicker, might help him on the defensive end, uh, being able to move his feet faster. Also, um, I think it also might help on the flip side, too. He might be a little quicker against, um, you know, defenders when they're trying to guard him. Um, and I'm really hoping that those three things happen. And I mean, two things happen. And the third being that him losing a little of that upper body 
um, bulk allows him to have a better shooting touch and he can kind of get back into uh, a closer to the three point um, percentage he had the year prior. Although I don't expect him to be that type of shooter. He shot 41%. I don't expect that. But if he can get somewhere around 36, you know, 35, 36, that'd be much better than what he shot this past year, which I think it was like 31, 32, maybe even 30. I don't know. It was bad. I want to pull that up. Um, I, what I'm curious to know. I'm curious to know, uh, for those of you who followed Kentucky uh, when Julius was uh, playing for that squad, did he ever play any three while on that squad? Because I know he played the five and the four primarily, but did he ever get minutes at the three? Um, and how was he utilized? Because the reality is I've never really seen him play off the wing like most, you know, wing players, you know, catch and shoot guy. I never really seen him in that sort of active role. Um, I do see him more. I, I, I think his strengths are playing off the block, you know, very similar to like what Z, where Zebo made his money. Um, I could see him doing that a lot more um, moving forward because, you know, getting slender, still keeping, keeping his physique the way it is, being as strong as he is, he can still play off the block, be a lot more athletic and quick off of the first step getting more lift to the basket. I could see that helping him now more than ever um, now that he lost some of the weight. Um, so I expect him to do more of that. And then also bringing it out from time to time and being able to work, you know, um, in open space. Um, he doesn't have the most elite ball handling skills. And that to me is where, why I don't see him as a, as a three. Um. Yeah, that that is probably a big a big factor in in judging if he can uh, you know really sustain himself at the three. The okay. shooting and the ball handling um, that's important. Mm -hmm. I would say you're right about that. And I was just looking at Julius's stats. I mean, yeah, he did shoot thirty a little over thirty percent um, from the three last year, which was horrific compared to forty one percent the year prior. But when you look at him. I mean, 30%, 41%, 27%, 34%, 22%, 27%, 27%. I don't know. Maybe Julius is not really a good three-point shooter. <laughs> like, will the real Julius Randle please stand up? I don't know. He's got to do a lot more spot shooting, too, at that position, especially if the ball isn't going to be in his hands to begin with, right, because we're running the offense through Jalen Brunson. And Jalen Brunson is the one who's going to orchestrate the offense. For the most part, you may see trickles of Randle you know, taking on, you know, have, being the the first option and depending on the, how the game is going. Um, but I do see Jalen Brunson running the offense for the majority and then Barrett getting his touches as well. Um, and mm -hmm. that's it if we stay packed. Um, if Donovan Mitchell comes to this team, then anything, everything changes, of course. That I agree with. And that was my, my Met fist pump, guys. Tyler Naquin, the new acquisition, just hit an opposite field homer. Let's go, baby! All nice. right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's it's it's, it's you, uh, if you're gonna do that, you might as well do a score update. It's six three Metsies. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's it's like this is a big series for my New York Mets. They're playing it's you know five games against the Atlanta Braves, not three, not normal series, not four an extended series. We're talking five games with the Braves. I, I see you. We all see you. You got the camo hat on, you ready for war. I get it. Yeah, you know what I mean? I got you. <laughs> So I'm talking about man. It's, it's nice. It's nice. Okay. All right, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bear with me, man. I'm in. I'm in a good good mood right now. I got a good groove, as Jay Z would say. Um. So let's see what I wanted to touch on here. I saw another boom. King Poppy NYK Ron and John. Does KD get traded this year? I really don't care. But <laughs> I think he stays. I think the net, if the Nets don't get a, a comparable, you know, slew of picks and players to sort of offset the, their needs, I think he, they 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 hold them until the trade deadline and see what happens there. Oh, hmm. well, I I think so too. I think. See, here's the thing. Kyrie wanted out. Then he, you know, signed the dotted line to make sure he got his money this year. So if they get him out of here, fine, but he's going to get paid, right? Mm -hmm. Kevin is like, this is a circus. I'm out of here. 
but you still don't know what's going to happen with Ben Simmons. Will you get Ben Simmons back healthy? And if he, if if you get a healthy Ben Simmons and he can contribute, you still got Kyrie. You keep Kevin yeah, Durant at least for the remainder of this year. That might sway Kevin Durant into staying with the team because mm -hmm. they can turn it around, and then he starts to see, okay, the dysfunction is now over. We have right. something out that I could rock with. The, right. They still got a little bit of an issue because I think they realized they might have made a mistake in bringing in Steve Nash as their coach. Not that Steve Nash won't become a good coach in the NBA, but for the team that he was supposed to be coaching, what he's trying to do over there, it wasn't the right fit to from my opinion looking at it from the outside could it be better this year maybe maybe he they give him a little bit more um you know uh comfortability as far as what he likes to do and they listen to him but you know that, that with those two guys the divas over there man they i don't know I feel like they're running that team so and they and they ran a lot of elder players right like lamarcus Aldridge came out and he played somewhat you know sparingly throughout the season had some good moments there. You know, they, they try to give um, Blake Griffin an opportunity that sort of failed. So, you know, the the Nets are sort of trying to figure it out on their side. I think they need the, all three of those players, that trio, to be available and ready to play opening season, open to open the season and not have any, um, any sort of uh, – um, they just don't need the the bad media at that point. You know, they've got to they got to they got to become come in ready to play. You know, um, and, and it really starts with Ben Simmons and Kyrie, because KD, you know, he's gonna he's about the basketball game. You know, he's about playing. Um, outside of that, he don't he doesn't do much else. So, right, um, and and thank you for that, New Yorker. Uh, that explains because I turned the game on. The Mets were already up two nothing. So I guess Tyler Naquin must have hit a home run. Um, somewhere in those two runs there. Maybe it was a two-run homer. Maybe it was a, a solo shot, whatever. Okay, so that's two home runs for Tyler Naquan. The ball is flying out of City Field tonight, folks. All right. So, and shout out to Neville Humphreys. Appreciate you. Um, he said, anybody who is making a comparison between Julius and Obi is extremely stupid. Stop with the dumb comparison. Tell us what you really think, Neville. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess they, they, outside of them playing the same position, they're two different players. They're, they're very different. That's true. Very different. Right? Um, all right. Let's see. Kevin McLean had another question. He said, is McClung on the Warriors 15-man 15 15 man team? Did I say that right? Yeah. 15-man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds weird when I said it. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't might, know if he, if he makes it all the man team. To be honest with you, uh, Golden a State squad. got a lot of a lot of players over there. Right. <laughs> um, they've got guys. Um, let me see. There's a guy that they have on their roster that I don't know if they're keeping. Uh, what's his name? I mean, they moved on from Gary Payton Jr. But outside, yeah. oh, of Gary actually, he's Payton. gone. Oh, wow. Forget it. I'm not even going to bring him up. There was a point guard that they had who used to play for the Nets. And I didn't even know about this guy. And I looked at some highlights of this game. This guy gets busy, but he's undersized. He's small. But as right. far as just playing point guard, shooting, breaking down the defense, getting to the hoop, very good. Uh, I can't remember his name now. now. I'll find it. I'll find it. But anyway, he's no longer there. I guess they decided to part ways. Um, right. But they do have other players. I mean, they got Guy Santos, who we saw in the summer league. Um, right. Ryan Rollins is somebody they picked up um, in the draft as well. And then you look at, they got Dante DiVincenzo, uh, Patrick Baldwin Jr., Moses Moody, Jermichael Green, Kevin Looney, Kaminga, James Wiseman. Uh, and you know Kaminga and Wiseman will play a bigger, bigger oh, role. Oh, yeah, definitely. Season, so. And then they still got to figure out what they're doing with Wiggins and Jordan Poole. And I you got Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Steph Curry. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, mean, those, I don't, those I don't think days. so, man. Yeah. If he does make it, it'll be definitely back end of the roster. You, you yeah, and, and uh, it's a shame because he's got some skills, that guy. And definitely his he got bunnies, man. That guy can leap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what was it? Trish D said that she wishes the Knicks had picked up Reggie Jackson last year when they had the chance. Hmm. 
I see, I, I see your point. I mean, listen, I'm not in love with Reggie Jackson um, when he has to be the man on a team, uh, like a focal point of the offense, and he's like a number one, number two type player. But as a role player, like a number three or four or something like that, he's a very good player. He can do a lot of good things out there on the court. And now I think this is when with these other three guys there, if they're healthy, you're going to see Reggie Jackson do some great things because there's no pressure on him. He'll be able to just play his game. It's kind of the same thing we saw with Andrew Wiggins. Mm -hmm. You take Andrew Wiggins away from Minnesota. He's not the man over there. With Golden State, he's just another good player that helps round out their roster. He right. fits in his role, and he is balling in that role. And that's the thing with them. They could go do with, with Kawhi and, and Paul George on that squad. They can go so many different directions. They can play small and still be a really good rebounding team. You know, they can spread the floor with Reggie Jackson. He's great on, you know, when it comes to transition offense. He's, you know, he can get up and down with the rest of the squad. Like, and then he's really solid when it comes to the pick and roll and pick and roll action. So, Reggie Jackson is a good guy to have, even if he doesn't keep the starting position over Wall. You know, but regardless, I think that's going to be the competition to look out for. Reggie Jackson is going to get his opportunities to start throughout the season. As we know, Wall is going to play all 82 games. So, I think, I think, I think he's going to be all right. Mm, I, I can agree with that. Um, uh, a couple more questions before we get out of here. Uh, Funky Goose World said, if we struggle uh, like this again this season, is it time to fire Tibbs? Yeah. If yeah, the Knicks, if the Knicks <laughs> come out and they win 37 games or less this year, Tibbs is yeah. going to get the ax. Listen, if, if, if we ain't playing 500 or better come All-Star break, they're going to be calling for his head. The media alone will be calling for his head. The Knicks fans wouldn't have to do anything. The media themselves will be asking for a change because they like to, you know, spur up controversy, and that's what they do. But once they, once that we we start to fall under that five hundred, you know, and we're not close enough, like when we're not a game out or two games out, come All Star break, they're gonna be asking for him for a removal of of, of the head coaching position. One hundred percent. Without a doubt. So that's why the Knicks have to be better than they were last year. It just has to happen. You, right. you invested $100 million in another in another player, and he's at a pivotal position that you've been yearning for some answers at. So right. they have to be better than 37 wins. Even though, honestly, it could be tougher this year. You think it was tough last year. Tough. The East is even better this year. So it's it's not. that's why I mean, I'm jumping out the window a little bit when I say they can get to 49 wins. It will be a struggle for these Knicks to get to 49 wins, even with Donovan, because yeah. I think that everybody's wins, are, it's going to be relative of the competition. Mm -hmm. So it'll be just spread out. You know what I mean? Some of these teams, I don't see, maybe one or two might be able to get high 50s, but I think there's going to be so much parity in the East. It's going to be hard to, to get off on you know, like really yeah. big streaks because the competition, I mean, that you now you got to worry about the Orlando's, the Detroit's of the world. Like, yeah, it's Atlanta, tough. Yeah. Atlanta. Like, yeah. it's gonna be tough. Yeah. The it's only team that I see on what they do. Uh, that's the only team that's sort of the you know because you know Cleveland's gonna be str stronger this year because they right. have a few years in. But like that Charlotte team is a team that I would expect to kind of falter. But again, you don't know. You don't know what you know what they the young ball player could do you know what i mean it's not lonzo mm -hmm. well, i always forget his name what is his name oh uh garland no oh, no you uh, said um oh lamello lamello Lamello. Sorry, my LaMelo. you never know how much lamello can you know uh build his, his his game up to be you know what i mean like he's still so young and if right. he if he gets any better you know watch out you know he can he could take the the nba by storm um and if he can continue to hit the long the long three and and open his game up a little bit without having to you know facilitate or be a second option who knows what he can become um but again man you, you know every every team's gotten better you know and so the knicks gotta really really um they they, they have to shoot shoot it better they have to be you know a little better overall on the defensive side they gotta stick to it offensively they got to get a lot better than being 30th in in, in pace you know what i mean uh, we just got to be better overall um and we got to be consistent they have to learn how to build consistency and build from that from that point on you know building camaraderie and consistency is going to take them a long way this season so we'll see how they can do 
Yeah, I agree with that. That's that's that, that's that's going to be very important. Uh, shout out to Dre Two K Eighteen in the building. Salute Evergreen G in the building. What's going on, Evergreen? Appreciate you, brother. Um, and and let me tell you, listen. I don't know if you guys know. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talented people in this Knicks community. Evergreen G makes beats. You know, nice. he he has outlandish takes about the Knicks. He said <laughs> he said the Knicks were going to win the championship. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you out there, brother. But anyway, okay, fine. Sometimes they're outlandish, but. No, he knows what he's talking about on occasion. Yeah. Um, he's got some good takes. He's a smart guy. He's very talented. He's an optimist. Um, yeah, he's so, an optimist. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we, yeah, we'll say that. He's an optimist. Um, he's very talented, man. He makes beats. Um, I don't know if you guys, you know, uh, have seen the beginning of like or the end of um, Andy's show on Nothing But Nicks, but Andy's, um, Andy's uh, intro and outro. That's the beat made by Evergreen G, and that's a fire beat, man. Nice. And, you know, he has his own little slogan. Like, you know, all these beat makers got their own little thing they throw in there. When you hear that's the jam, that's Evergreen G. So you, <laughs> might, you might hear that on a couple of things you're not even noticing. Nice. But, uh, yeah, shout out to Evergreen, man. Salute. Appreciate you, brother. Um, okay. So uh, a couple of questions. Hey, on the Make the yeah. beats and engineer also. That's what's up. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Look at that. Oh, okay, Dre. Do your thing, brother. Appreciate you. Um, that's a good point. This is a, just another point that I wanted to throw up there. And honestly, this might be a very interesting point, guys. This might be where it all started last year. I'm not going to lie. It could be. Geraldine says it all started when he got COVID and some fans was happy he had it and talked bad about his family. That is very true. You guys remember that was a little wild when he got COVID and guys were like happy right. that he, got, I mean, don't get me wrong. I wanted to be able to see the young guys play, but I wasn't happy. He got COVID. That's a little extreme. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, but again, that was, I mean, I spoke to this, right? Like this is when you got to carry yourself above that. You have to be able to like, you know, because words oh, are and, words. And this is about Julius Randle, guys, for those who may not be, you know, seeing right. where we're going with this. We were talking about right. Julius with this. And and so words are words, right? And so if it doesn't affect you directly, if it isn't a threat to your family, you know, or to you, um, you know, we're, you got to let those slide, man. You got you to be bigger than that, um, especially if you want it. If this is really what you wanted, you wanted to play in New York, you wanted a big stage. You wanted to be the face of this franchise. You have to. You have to be able to bury that, you know, and 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 live live up to expectation. Um, and that's what you see the stars do in New York, right? Your judges of the world, you know. Even David Wright, I give you somebody, David Wright. He did it right. You know what I mean? So think about players like that. Your Walt Clive Frazier's. You know, they all had. You know, Patrick Ewan even had his time with the media, and he always carried himself with respect and you know, and, 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 and sort of, you know, just gracefully was able to like become that, that staple in, in, in on a, in a franchise, you know, and, and that's what you want in your, in your prime players. Agreed. No, I, I agree with you on that. That's a, that's a fact. Um, salute to Angel Torres. Appreciate you. Um, oh, salute. Kareem Grant is in the building. What's good twin. What's happening, man. Appreciate you, man. Um, Louisiana Knicks. Now, this is a question. This is a hot topic question. Hmm. Okay. Do y'all think Grimes should stop the Knicks from making the D Mitchell trade? I I personally would not make that stop the, the D Mitchell trade. I personally feel like we 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 took a fly on Barrett. Barrett's the guy who I'm ruling with. Um, even if Grimes has more upside. I'm still leaning that Barrett will become the the better player or is our better option for us currently. And if if they want Grimes, I'm willing to put him in any trade offer, at least right now. Um, and I think John said it best. I agree with that. I look, I like Grimes's game. I think he could be, uh, you know, if you guys know, I've kind of jumped out the window a little bit with who I think Grimes could be. Uh, I've lessened my expectations a little bit, but I still think he could be a really good player. But he won't be Donovan Mitchell. And because of that, 
Right. If he's the one holding up the Donovan Mitchell trade, then he's got to go. Now, get, don't get me wrong. I'm not really happy with the idea of Grimes and Obi going together because that could be a, a possibility. I don't like that. Right. Um, it all depends on what the what the package is. If if right. the package is Grimes and Obi, and then you know we're talking Fournier and someone else for, just for for money, picks. and then the picks. What am I going to do? Like, you got to give up something. So I guess you got to deal with it. But if right. it's like Grimes, OB, quickly, like if it, no, no, I'm not doing all that. That's just, right. I'm not doing all of it. Got to keep some of these guys. But, yeah. but, but Grimes could go. Right. Even if I, I, I I'm not going to have that be the sticking point from me getting Donovan Mitchell. There got to be some else, something else in there that's, that's stopping this whole thing. And from what I've heard, shout out to James Hansen. Um, from Hoops Nerd Jazz, who was on the show um, two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Uh, it may have been. Or maybe it was, it was last week. week. Maybe it was last week. Dude, things got... They fly I by. I don't know what's <laughs> flying. <laughs> but um, shout out to him, because I watched his show, and he mentioned that um, he still thinks the deal's going to get done, even though, um, you know... There's a lot going on right now, and it's kind of at a standstill. But he said he feels like it could be Grimes is one of the, the pieces holding it up, but it also could be the picks because the right. picks are very important, and there might be conditions and different stipulations on the picks that the Knicks are setting because the Knicks have unprotected picks, but they might be trying to protect some of them. Um, you know, And because of that, that's something they got to figure out. And it really could come down to just – you know, something happening in 2029 or 2030. You never know. One of those picks could be, is it top three, top five protected? It could be, it comes down to all that. Cause you got to figure out all of this stuff before you execute the trade. And when you're dealing with a lot of picks that do have protections and all this stuff, or if you want to institute your own, it can get very tricky. And I understood that. So shout out to James. Once again, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, and also Louisiana Knicks said a follow-up with that. Do you think the Knicks front office is overrating Grimes' value? I don't know if they're overrating his value personally from my end. I think Grimes is what Grimes is. He's a guy who could be a really good three-point shooter. Could be. Um, he's got to work on his his um, his uh, uh, repetition and form. Like He's got to continue to keep doing things the same way in order to get higher efficiency because he's very streaky. Even from the free throw line, you would think this guy would be like a 90% free throw shooter. He's not. Mm -hmm. He's, he's kind of streaky when, when it comes to the free throws too. Uh, so he's a guy who could be a really good free throw shooter, a really good three-point shooter, and a very good defender. Um, but all that stuff takes time and understanding your opponent, studying the league, he's going to need to play to, in order to get all that. But once again... He is not Donovan Mitchell. I know Donovan Mitchell is not a good defender, but he is fantastic offensively. Fantastic, folks. So and Grimes right now just coming off of injury too. So you have to weigh that as an as you know as time goes on. True. What is the severity of that injury? Will it plague him throughout his um, career? Those sort of things. Uh, Dan Marrero said, "Thank you for the question, uh, Louisiana Nick." By the way, Dan Marrero said, "Do you think that Poole gets traded?" To the Knicks, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love it. <laughs> honestly, I, I, I don't think, think so. I I think, I, I think that if the if the Warriors have to make a move, that's tough, man. It's like they got to make pick. the move for it back to that's Kevin Durant. Thing. Like, like you got to pick between Poole and Wiggins, right? Or do you? But they're gonna have to because they can't afford all these guys. Yeah, but remember, Draymond is on, almost on his way out. Oh well, okay. Right? So, so he, you got to start yeah. making room. All right, you ahead of me. You, you ahead of me because that's where I was going. Maybe right. Draymond being would be the person that you let go, or in cut order salary. To keep those other guys. They have those, you know, they have those uh, what they call veteran exception deals. At some point, Draymond might be willing to take one of those. You know, and become the Iguodala of the squad. You know what I mean? Um, he's had a thirteen-year season. Man, I don't know, bro. <laughs> How many seasons has he played already? Like, is he up where upwards of thirteen? No, because that would be uh, Curry. Curry's like at at that point in his career, thirteen. So Draymond would have came a, a year or two later. 
Draymond, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seasons. Ten seasons. So, yeah, he's still got a little ways to, to play. He isn't as athletic as he used to be, although he's not – that's not his game anyway. I don't know. I, I just I just don't see them moving away from a Jordan Poole unless they're really high on Jonathan Kaminga and what he brings um, and maybe shifting uh, their approach on – how they play their game, but I think they really rely on their um, outdoor shooting and, um, and facilitators like uh, Jordan Poole, you know, to to bring it when guys like Thompson and Curry don't have good nights. Yeah, um, and I will say that the one thing about Draymond, I mean, he is still very solid defensively, but but he is a terrible shooter, right and for me, even as much as I love Draymond, and I would take him on the Knicks in a heartbeat. I know some people may not love that because he might be crazy in New York, but as far as what he would bring to the team and and his defensive attitude and how he gets after it, and, and the way even he facilitates offensively for guys getting them open, that would be great. The only thing about the shooters is, around him, though. Yeah, but he's not like a Rodman. You know, you can say what yeah. you will about Rodman. Rodman was a great defender and a Excellent rebounder. Mm -hmm. So that's the a best different. That ever did it. The best yeah, that ever did it. So that's, that's different. different. Like you could yeah. deal with the fact that he wasn't scoring. The dude mm -hmm. gave you so many opportunities; it didn't matter. Like, <laughs> but what you couldn't deal with is his off the court situation. Correct. Right? Not not being able to play games because he's partying out in Las Vegas and stuff like like it takes a certain group of players and an MJ to get that guy back on the squad. You know, like you can't rely on a guy like Rodman. Um, and, and I think Draymond would be good. I don't know if he would be what he is without Curry and Thompson. Like, I think he's a good player and he, you know, I think he's an NBA quality player. I just don't know if he would do anything for a Knicks team. Like imagine him coming in here for Randall, for instance, would he make this team better? I don't think so. I don't know. He's not going to give you 20 and 10. You know, no, he's going to give you facilitation. He may give you more headaches because now he's going to be barking orders to these young players. Like, I, I just don't know. And and we don't have good shooters. We don't have the... the yeah, we don't... Know. Yeah, we do not have the Golden State firepower from outside. Yeah. Not at all. So <laughs> I, I just think that looks a lot different. I agree with you on that. Goes. That's a great point. That's a fantastic point, actually, John. Not having... I mean, because that really makes up for what he does. They have such good scoring over there that you you he doesn't kill you, doesn't hurt the team as much. I mean, there's a couple right. free throws you'd like to get back, but really, that it, it's not that bad, big of a deal. They can get around it. Um, right. So that's a good point. Shout out to uh, Brahim. What's going on? Appreciate you. Joe Long in the building. Appreciate you. Brooklyn that's Butch. That's uh griff 181 is here salute um uh queen is in the building um uh salute ron and john better deals ahead at the trade deadline with all our picks and all our players smart organi organizational moves now this is queen guys not the queen so keep that in mind this is someone else so salute to you queen appreciate it um all right um and we, we're at the 128 mark. This is longer than we were planning on being here. Let's just take two more questions and get up out of here, folks. Uh, A Train says, Who's taking the last shot, Brunson, Randall, or Barrett? Who's our go to player this year? It's a good question. Brunson. I think there's going to be a toss up, though. You know, I if think I really think about it, I think it go either way. I think this is a toss up. I don't yeah. think Brunson is the guy for the last second shot. Right. I think Brunson is that might be the guy making the play. Like if he, if he gets the shot, if he gets the look, he'll take it. But I think mm -hmm. he'll be making the he'll be making the play to get somebody open to or make play the, the decoy or the decoy or the decoy. Because I, I can see Randall get, getting some last-minute opportunities I as still well. see Randall uh, getting those last-second shots and RJ as well because they both have had moments. Um, so, yeah, it, it's I think it's it's by committee. I don't think you can say there's one who deserves it more than the other. Not at this point. Right. Not hey, I want to take one more question, and I want to take the questions from JQ. 
Did you see it up there? <laughs> I want to add uh, this question. Hold on one second. One second. Let's see. <laughs> oh, man. I have to scroll down a lot. JQ. Uh, J, is it J? Wait, wait. No. Hold on. Oh, I see it. Yeah. That's the question I want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about that, baby. <laughs> Get that Don Julio. Girl. Nice, nice. That's the yeah. cheer. We gotta cheer that one up. I gotta. We gotta bring some for the next NBA report. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Keep 1942 that Don Julio is in. That needs to be in the building for real. Oh, that that nice. needs to be a part of the chat. Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I'm about that life too. Not as much as John, maybe. <laughs> I'm little, maybe I'm less about that. Now you're calling me an alky, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nah, nah, but I could go for some Don Julio for sure. Cool. I'm more of a Jack Daniels. I'm a Jack Daniels guy. Actually, you know, I'm um guys. I'm a Captain and Coke type of guy. Captain Morgan's rum and and Coke yeah, yeah. is you. my go-to drink. You. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Annuity25 is in the building. E. Gibson is here. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, we are about to get out of here as the love chat stuff starts to come into the, <laughs> into the chat. Perfect timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. It was like, yeah, stop the show, folks. Um, yeah, Rodman averaged 14 points, 14 rebounds, missing layups. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the wildest thing ever. Um, he could hit free throws. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I agree with. Oh, Glenn Cost Costin is in the building. Salute to you, Jay from Washington Heights. Thank you guys. Hey man, you guys are tuning in right at the end of the show. But by all means, feel free to watch the replay. This show was about y'all. Once again, if you're first tune, uh, you know it's your first time tuning in right now. Um, our, we were supposed to have a special guest, Coach Nick from the B Ball Breakdown Show. Um, we're hoping to continue to get him on the show maybe in the next couple weeks, maybe next week or the week after. Uh, unfortunately, he had a family emergency. He couldn't make it, but he sent his apologies. So we made this show about you guys, about the fans, taking your questions, seeing right. what you wanted to talk about. And hopefully we did a good job of addressing a lot of it. I'm sorry if we couldn't get to everything, but, you know. And the time flew by. <laughs> yeah, man. Time <laughs> flies, I guess, when you're incorporating the chat. Yeah, that's right. Astro is off the chain is in the building. Appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Well, thank you guys once again. Appreciate you as always for rocking with us. Uh, salute to you guys, man, because y'all, y'all the unsung, you know, champion of, of all of these shows, man. We appreciate Absolutely. the love and the support. Um, continue to tune in to nothing but Nick's uh, content. You know, Agent Super Argo is in the building. What's good? Kendall Rivera is here. Damn, Kendall, why'd you come now, man? <laughs> what's going on y'all deron wayne i see you i think i mentioned you before but i'll mention you again um yeah so guys thank you always support uh you know nothing but nick content we're talking about you know the queen's court with steph uh nixon bruises with tony crow you've got the what's the name of andy's show i don't know if andy has a name for his show yet not yet, huh? Well, <laughs> whatever show Andy wants to drop, that's right. International Andy is a part of the mix Andy. now. Salute to him. Salute to Josh, a.k.a. Uncle Fulio and the controversy. Yeah. Definitely show your love to his show. Uh, always show love to Sim and all the shows he might be rocking. Shoot arounds, pre-games, post-games, impromptu shows. Right. Um, front stoop. <laughs> the front stoop. Yep, yep, yep. And by the way, guys, I, he, I, I believe he's going to do a front stoop tonight talking a little bit more about the Brittany Griner situation, maybe a little bit more about Iman Shumpert uh, and everything that happened with that. Um, you guys know what happened. I don't want to get into it. Uh, I think Sim and um, Isaiah were talking about it earlier. He may talk about it again later. So tune into that, guys. Uh, that's the front stoop. And also, thank you guys for always supporting Still Nick fans and rocking with us. Uh, continue to follow us on Monday nights. We've got our weekly recap show about whatever's going on Nick-related for the week. Um, that's Mondays at nine. Uh, you got the NBA report eight o'clock, usually on Thursdays. Uh, and then you got the know the ledge show on Saturdays at 11 AM. So thank you for all the support and love. We appreciate y'all OCD shaggy. I see you Carrie Cooper. I see you. We are about to get out of here. Any final words, uh, John, man, as always, I say, stay blessed to the chat, stay blessed out there. Those who are watching, uh, you know, looking forward to the next one. 
There you go. There you go. And salute to my guy, uh, Jose, always holding us down in the ones and twos. But right now he's holding down his real job, working tonight, you know, burning that oil. So appreciate you, Jose, as always. Thank you, guys. Tell a friend who tells a friend who tells another friend. Still, Nick fans, we'll be back again. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one, man. Have a great night. Run that, 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 run that,